Long have I waited at the Guardians. I must know, are the stories true? Surely you've heard them. Tales of the stones granting powers to heroes of old. Those special few being able to choose any stone to rewrite his fate. Of course you've heard them. That's why you touch the stones as you pass by. You've heard they bring luck, or a sign from the gods. But you think little of the action. It has no true meaning for you. I see it in your eyes as you pass. You do not believe. But I have always believed. Always felt that I was one of the few whose fate was not sealed at birth by the stars overhead. One of the few who could use these stones. Draw on the power of the gods to change my life. Change my future. I have always felt it. Thanks largely to the miracles of mortar and cement, modern Tamrielic architecture can fit the most precise specifications. Not only can mortals build colossal magnificent structures, but they serve a plethora of purposes. But there is a certain kind of primordial mystique that can only be captured by megaliths. In our world, the sight of megalithic structures evokes a sense of wonder. They are enduring remnants of times long past, of ancient peoples with alien cultures, completely unlike us, but also connected to to the same terrain. Similar menhirs and monoliths spec the countrysides of Tamriel, treated with quiet reverence, but far from understood. By modern standards, these magical landmarks may seem archaic. The Sarsen Shrine seems sporadic, not constructed with any pattern or organization in mind. Compare these primitive stone formations to the Way Shrines of the Heartland, for example. In their perfect pillared circles, pilgrims feel the watchful eyes of the divines upon them as they genuflect and pray for a blessing. The same applies with the Adric Shrines found across the northern tundras. Masterfully mason shrines sit atop their altars, placed with deliberate resplendence. Yet it is the seemingly simplistic megalith that continues to perplex Tamriel's greatest scholars. No matter who you ask, from the intellectuals of the Alakir to the professors of the Winterhold College, even the arcane university lecturers, no one can tell you with any semblance of certainty what these stones mean, when they were erected, and who is responsible for their presence on Tamriel. But don't let that dissuade you, because Drew from Fudge Muppets on the case, and together we can unearth the secrets of these megaliths. Let's start our journey in the north. Here, there are two kinds of megalith worth analyzing. The first kind exists only in Solstheim, and they are called Allmaker Stones. These slender obelisks were supposedly created by the Allmaker, the god of the native Skarl people's monotheistic religion. The Skarl of Solstheim believed that the Allmaker considers oneness with the land to be crucial, and as such, the Skarl seek harmony with the wilderness. The six Allmaker Stones maintain the balance of nature on the remote island, and their pagan names are Beast, Earth, Sun, Tree, water and wind. Further south in Skyrim, the home of the Nords, we can find the Standing Stones. Unlike the Allmaker Stones, the surfaces of these Standing Stones have been carved and are all exactly the same shape. These stones are attuned to the cosmos, and etched into their front faces are the thirteen constellations of the night sky. It is said that these stones grant special powers to worthy heroes of old, allowing the individual to alter the arcane effects associated with their birth sign. Generally, the constellation present in the sky during a newborn's birth dictates their birth sign, and this cannot be changed. It's likely that the Standing Stones of Skyrim simply offer chosen mortals the ability to opt into additional benefits from one other constellation of their choice. Of course, interacting with a standing stone isn't going to change the individual's date of birth. Similar stones can be found scattered throughout the countrysides of Tamriel, only they appear more natural, not smoothed into uniform shapes like the standing stones. These are called Munda stones, and are also associated with the constellations. In Tamriel's heartland of Cyrodiil, various kinds of monolith can be found, and like the Munda stones, these appear more natural, not embellished with intricate carvings or iron trimmings. These megaliths are called doom stones, but they aren't quite so worrisome as their ominous name suggests. These Central monoliths are surrounded by a crude circle of smaller stones, and upon their surfaces, the outlines of the zodiac and other celestial bodies exude an arcane aura. There are 20 doomstones known to exist in Cyrodiil, 13 of which, called birth sign stones, feature the constellations. The remaining seven, called heaven stones, are apparently named after long forgotten cults, devoted to astronomical bodies like the moons, the void, Aetherius, Magnus, and Akatosh. 
These doom stones are not to be mistaken with rune stones, which are very similar looking men here's, only they glow green instead of red, and seem to be associated with oblivion rather than Ethereus. Rune stones bestow chosen individuals with bound Daedric weapons and armor. As you can probably tell, megalithic structures are not rare in Tamriel, yet we seem to know so little about them beyond their existence and their effects. Who erected them and why? Are they significant to specific cultures? Do we even know when they emerged, or are we supposed to believe they've always been there. In the words of Drevis Nellerin of the Winterhold College, the existence of so-called doomstones throughout Skyrim has been repeatedly verified. The meaning of these stones has not. The prevailing opinion of Skyrim natives is that the stones are indeed magical in nature. While there is no direct evidence of this, it does seem likely. References to similar stones appear in lore throughout the various Tamrielic cultures. None of said stones, however, exactly match the markings or distribution of Skyrim stones. At present, there is no confirmation of any of the various theories surrounding the nature of these stones. Their relative positions do not indicate that any individual stone is part of a larger, unobserved pattern. Also, their placement throughout Skyrim does not correspond to any known magical phenomenon. The age of the stones themselves has yet to be officially determined. It has been widely assumed that they were placed during the Merefic Era. Writings from that period, including those of Isgrimor himself, do not mention the stones, and thus this idea cannot be verified. Nonetheless, many are drawn to these stones based on the local stories describing them as a source of significant power. This is an official college lecture from a master illusionist, and it's essentially a long-winded way of saying, yeah, nah, we don't know how they got here or why they're here, but they're pretty cool, aren't they? All five kinds of megalithic structure in Tamriel are magical in nature. They have that in common. And with the exception of the Allmaker Stones and the Rune Stones, they all share some connection to astronomy and the constellations. In search of more detail, you could leave the College of Winterhold for the Arcane University, but even Cyrodiil's best lecturers seem baffled by the topic of Tamriel's megaliths, especially in regards to what time period they hail from. Cyrodiil's Rune Stones are thought to belong to one of three time periods, the Dawn Era, the Merefic Era, or the late First Era. Those who believe the runestones to be Dawn Era artifacts, created by the Aedra or Daedra, often describe them as Lorcan's birthing gift to mortals. Others assign the runestones to the Merefic or early First Era, primarily on the basis of their simple, even crude design and craft. The most common practice is to place the raising of the runestones within the High First Era Cyrodiil of Empress Hestra and the Reman Emperors. Runestones found in forts like Sancrator support a First Era date, though the stones could have been moved to the forts from earlier sites. The greatest objection to First Era dating is that the stones are completely unlike any other examples of First Era architecture. Yes, the runestones are named after famous emperors like Riemann or Hestra, but they could easily have been given new names by the same people who moved them to the forts in the first place. Runestones, by virtue of being monoliths, suggest primeval origins. They surely predate modern building practices. We need only look at Aelid architecture, or that of the early Imperials, to see that building had come a long way by the First Era. And on top of that, we have fairly reliable and comprehensive histories of the First Era, especially in Cyrodiil. So how do we explain our complete perplexity in regards to what the stones actually do, and how their magical properties function? A stronger argument can be made for civilized Imperials moving the stones as opposed to erecting them in the first place. Before Tiber Septim, Cyrodiil's roads varied greatly in quality, and were often impassable in bad weather and winter seasons. In the late First Era, Empress Hestra improved the roads, and the Riemann Emperors continued her policies. The last period of First Era road building was in the reign of the last strong Akaviri potentate, Sidria Shark. Note that three classes of rune stones are named, respectively Hestra stones, Riemann stones, and Sidria Shark stones. Could these rune stones have served as waypoints and landmarks for military patrols of the nascent Imperial Legion? Did battle mages activate rune stones on arrival, thus lighting arcane beacons within the next rune stone? This makes a lot more sense. Their origins may have been a mystery to the Empire, but their mages would have seen their practical potential. The Arcane University lecturer speculated that perhaps they are divine relics, and because they are associated with the Aedra, their powers fluctuate depending on how devout mortals are in their worship. 
Suppose that the runestones are divine, and that the secrets of their magics are revealed only by divine revelation. Suppose that the runestones existed, for whatever reason and in whatever form, long before the coming of the Cyrodiilic emperors. Suppose, however, that the power of these stones had been hidden, but was revealed to certain holy men or prophets in the first era. Suppose that, under the guidance of the gods, these runestones were newly consecrated to a great purpose, the founding of the Cyrodiilic Empire. Once these ancient monuments might have been powerful bulwarks of the Cyrodiilic Emperors, battle mages and priests. But imagine, as the Emperors grew weak, and as the power and glory of the Empire waned, and as the people fell away from their service to the gods, imagine the power of the stones waned with them. But once again, this is conjecture. So is that it? Is it impossible to determine their origins with any evidence? Perhaps, but there is no denying their ability to connect mortals to the cosmos, to Aetherius, to the gods of Mundus. The Black Horse Courier posits that the Stones of Cyrodiil were in some way related to the sky-worshipping cults of beast folk native to the Heartland, who inhabited the region long before the Ages of Man. But this theory is even more speculative than the lecturers. I believe the lack of information we can find on Tamriel's various megalithic structures is no accident. It's actually fitting when compared to the real world. As I said at the top of the video, monoliths, megaliths, menhirs, standing stones, whatever you want to call them, they evoke a feeling of awe unlike anything you might feel when seeing modern architecture. They're archaic, they're rudimentary, but their ability to endure the eroding effects of time and the elements is uncanny. I would go as far as to say it's magical, and you could gather the world's very best geologists and archaeologists, but you will never uncover all the secrets, and a great deal will remain a mystery to us. Like the scholars of the arcane university, even the greatest scientific and arcane minds are confined to a level of guesswork. Megaliths have endured since the Stone Age, since the Neolithic, even Mesolithic times. Sites like Gobekli Tepe in Turkey are believed to be up to 12,000 years old. And we are still learning new things about Stonehenge, one of the most well-known megalithic sites to the present day, like where exactly the famous blue stones were quarried from. Tamriel stones, be they Allmaker, Standing, Mundus, Doom, or Rune stones, do not hail from the first era. They are remnants of ages that precede mortals. They may be ripped from the ground and moved to new locations like the Cyrodiilic Rune stones, or even tainted and used for ill like Mirak with the Allmaker stones. But these stones will endure and serve as a reminder to mortals that the world is far older than they are. But there you have it, guys, the Standing Stones of Tamriel. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. My name is Drew, this is Fudge Muppet, and I'll see you in the next one.